These are the stories topping the news. Prime Minister Douglas hosts Caribbean talented teen contestants to lunch. Astro wins senior Calypso Monarch. The search continues for a missing airplane in Guyana. And rescuers have recovered bodies and debris from the missing Air Asia flight. Hello and welcome to the ZIZ Midday Newscast for Tuesday, December 30th, 2014. I am J.D. Keynes. Now for the news in detail. Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Dr. Denzel L. Douglas, will host the participants of the 35th edition of the Miss Haynes Smith Caribbean Talented Teen Pageant to lunch at Carambola today, Tuesday. Later this evening, the Prime Minister will crown the winner during the pageant at National Carnival Village. The show starts at 8 p.m. On Monday, the Caribbean teens were hosted to lunch at Manhattan Gardens by Mr. Conris Maynard, the youthful St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party candidate for West last year. The countries participating are St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Anguilla, Dominica, Montserrat, Guyana, Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, St. Martin, Nevis and host country St. Kitts. It was a historic night at the Sugar Mill on Monday evening as Astro became the first Nevision Calypsonian to win the National Carnival Senior Calypso Crown. A night of wit and entertainment ended with a stunning decision as the first Nevision was crowned the new Calypso King of St. Kitts and Nevis. After two rounds of competition, Oscar Astro Brown amassed a total of 807 points to lead the seven other Calypsonians in Monday's final. He performed Flushed It in the first round, then came back with Carnival Therapy in the second round to seal his victory. Speaking to ZIZ News, Astro said this is the payoff for all his years of hard work. Feels great. It's been a long, hard year. It's been a long, hard about eight years for me here in Sinkets. I've toiled and I've toiled, and this is the just, this is the pair for all the hard work. I never thought about giving up. I always said I'll keep coming back and coming back. And tonight I felt really special. I, I, I don't know what to say, honestly. The first one up position went to Kimara Lady Diva Martin, who performed to be cancer free and dear fans. She said she delivered two of her strongest Calypso performances ever in the finals. Well, my performance was my utmost best, so I'm very proud of myself and I'm, I couldn't give any more. That was my best. And I will be back next year hitting harder and buying for that crown. The newly crowned Calypso Monarch said he will now go on and represent the Federation on the regional stage. Thanks to all the DJs and all the radio stations who play my music for this year. Thank you very much. I love you. Thanks to the Legends Band, the Legends family, my family and everybody, my fans, everybody who travel from Nevis with me. I'm going to represent my country of St. and Nevis in Anguilla and I'm going to prove to them that this wasn't a one-off thing. I'm going to do it in Anguilla. I'm going to do it in, and I'm going to mash them up in culture armor as well. The second and third one-up positions were separated by a mere point with veteran Calypsonian Socrates edging out Queenie G. Socrates performed his songs Holy Wars and Soccer Don't Have to Sing, while Queenie G sang Legacy and No Ordinary Being. Reporting for ZIZ News, I am Patrice Harris. In related news, Chairman of the Carnival Committee, Sylvester Anthony, said he is happy Astro was victorious. Um, but he's one of the competitors. He's been a, a long a long time um, competitor um, and I think you know the judge's decision as we've told all the, our artists the judge's decision is final and we ask all artists to respect the judge's decision. So I'm very happy for Astro and I'm glad that he's, he's been victorious tonight. Meanwhile Anthony said he is excited that persons have responded positively to carnival events and looks forward to large crowds for the remaining activities. Um, we saw that developing during the tents. The crowd somehow seemed bigger. I thought perhaps it was because some of them were free events. Um, but you know, we had two semi-finals, soccer, soccer monarch semi-finals, and we had huge crowds. And those last three events, the soccer monarch finals, the um, national carnival queen pageant, and tonight's show, the, the cinema monarch, uh, Calypso Monarch competition, the crowds have been huge. This is great news. This is great news for Carnival. Uh, it, it's great. It's great to see that people are responding very positively to what we are trying to put together. And I'm, I'm perhaps the happiest man around right now. Carnival events continue tonight with the Haynes Smith Caribbean Talented Teen Pageant and the Junior Carnival and the Grand Carnival Parades on Wednesday and Thursday. 
The vans aim we led Nevis Island Administration, NIA, refused the assistance of the federal government and the Sugar Industry Diversification Foundation, SIDF, in financing the geothermal project in Nevis. This was disclosed by, Prem by Prime Minister, the right Honorable Dr. Denzel L. Douglas, who said he raised the issue shortly after Premier Amy's Concerned Citizens Movement won the Nevis Island administration elections in 2012. During his recent weekly radio program, Ask the Prime Minister, Dr. Douglas noted that they had reached the point where they had the financial arrangement made. He said he was certain that by now the geothermal plant would be functional and we would be having electricity much more cheaply produced. But the Premier Amy told him that they have their own financing arrangement. He added that the project has gone nowhere because, quote, some people believe that keeping out the federal government is the best approach, end quote. Regionally, search and rescue teams continue to come up empty in their hunt for an aircraft that went missing just after takeoff on Sunday from Media. More in this report. The Air Services Limited aircraft was piloted by 26-year-old Nicholas Prasad and also had on board a cargo handler, 51-year-old David Bisnott. Sunday's search for the aircraft yielded no results, and up to news time today, nothing had changed. An aerial search resumed just after 7 a.m. today, the Civil Aviation Authority reported. Two helicopters and a Cessna caravan are in the search area, with the Ghana Defence Force Special Forces. Another Cessna 206 departed to Mary at around 8.30 a.m. with coordinators and investigators from the Civil Aviation Authority, carrying additional equipment and supplies. Around noon Sunday, the Tamari Air Traffic Control lost communication with the Air Services Limited Britain Norman Islander that was operating between Madia and Karasparu in Region 8. Captain Prasad and the handler were on board a twin-engine aircraft which took off from Madia Airstrip at 11.42 on a routine local cargo flight. The aircraft was scheduled to arrive at Karasparu 17 minutes later, but it never did, and so the search and rescue team was put into operation and remains in the location this evening. For Capital News, Neil Mark. In St. Lucia, caregivers at the National Institute to Create Employment, or NICE, are doing their part to ensure elderly residents have a joyous and comfortable Christmas season. The workers visited the elderly and shut in this week, spreading cheer and delivering gifts and food hampers. Nice workers, we would like to present you with that little token. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Nice caregivers make life a bit easier for the elderly all year long. But Christmas is a special time. And for Christmas 2014, the workers ensured they brought some treats and gifts for the elderly in the South. Nice teams joined by coordinator Perry Thomas visited the residents, bearing smiles and gifts. They went from house to house, bringing joy to the hearts of many of the elderly. <laughs> Oh yes, I treat him well. I get if I'm bad, I me 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 well. I keep him on by my certain bag. I make a certain call me. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. The fact is, sometimes the elderly among us are lonely, and sometimes at Christmas they feel even more removed from society. Angelina Flavius was brought to tears by the gifts and the simple fact that a group of people thought of her and remembered her at Christmas. I was happy with all of that. 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 NICE coordinator Perry Thomas says he is pleased to be part of this initiative, which goes to the heart of the caregivers program, its warmth, selflessness and devotion. As we have always said before, the caregivers go beyond, beyond above and beyond the duties. And, to, and, and today what, we, what they are doing here today is a pro, proves that all the hampers that they put together came from their own personal resources. And as a program, in as much as we are restricted by budgets and so we are thankful that we have persons who have the interests of the the elderly at heart that they have taken on their own to actually do what they are doing today every person that have received a gift has shown 
in, in themselves a, a, an appreciation for what the young ladies have done. And today we came down and be part of this um, exercise and we are very thankful for that. The NICE team also visited the sick and bedridden. Thomas says he's proud of the home caregivers and their continued commitment to the sick and the elderly. Alison Kentish, HDS News Force. Internationally, Indonesian officials have confirmed that bodies and debris found in the Java Sea of Borneo are from Air Asia Flight QZ8501 that went missing on Sunday, a statement by Air Asia says. Air Asia CEO Tony Fernandez said he was devastated by the news. President Joko Widodo told media he had instructed all search teams to focus on finding the passengers and crew. Suspended from a helicopter, a rescuer prepares to recover a body spotted in the water. It's believed to be one of the passengers from the Air Asia flight. As well as several bodies, debris has been found, including what's thought to be one of the aircraft doors. And a search plane has spotted a shadow on the seabed, suggesting the crashed jet has now been located. At a press conference this morning, the coordinator of the search said he was 95% sure the objects found in the water belong to the plane. Another search team is to be deployed to the area. A team of divers is being put on standby. The latest developments have confirmed the worst fears of the relatives, and as they saw the pictures of the search, some were in tears. One woman collapsed in distress. The plane took off from Surabaya at 5.30 on Sunday morning with 162 people on board. Contact with air traffic control was last made at 6.24 a.m. The plane should have then continued on this route to Singapore. With no distress signal or mayday, investigators believe some kind of catastrophic event must have taken place. The pilot, who was a distinguished military flyer before he joined commercial airlines, had requested permission to change course because of bad weather. AirAsia's boss, Tony Fernandez, has responded to the latest news by posting a message on Twitter. My heart is filled with sadness, he says. On behalf of AirAsia, my condolences. After two days of searching, the focus will now turn to recovering what remains of the aircraft. And with that, perhaps, will come answers about how and why it crashed. Ben Gagan, BBC News. Rescue teams have evacuated more than 400 people from a car ferry that caught fire off Greece's Adriatic coast in a 36-hour operation on rolling seas. But 10 people were killed. Sarah Toms reports. After more than 24 hours of battling the cold, winds and fear, more than 400 survivors were rescued from the burning ferry in the Adriatic. Now in the darkness, exhausted, they finally stand on firm ground for the first time since a fire broke out on the Norman Atlantic on Sunday. These weary passengers had been winched away by helicopter and transferred to nearby ships. Ten people were killed in the disaster, but the number of missing is still unclear. Officials say there were 478 people on the ferry travelling from Petras in Greece to Ancona in Italy. Many families got separated during the rescue, but most appeared to maintain their humour. The airlift has finished and the captain was the last to leave his ship. For these survivors, the ordeal is over. But their questions remain about why the European ferry caught a light and killed fellow passengers. We move now to the weather. Skies over the Federation will be partly cloudy with winds blowing from the east at 15 to 25 miles per hour. This evening will have mostly cloudy skies and a few showers after midnight. Sunset will be at 5.45 p.m. And that's it for Zeraiza's Midday Newscast. Join us at 6.30 p.m. on radio and 7 p.m. on J Channel 5 for the major news presentation. I have been your presenter, J.D. Keynes. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.